and we'd like to welcome you again. Hello, Pastor Mary. I just want to take you back. I like that teaching you did about Job, about don't don't blame him, don't praise him, just praise him. Absolutely. Don't blame him, praise, praise him. him. You you know, don't blame can, God, praise God. You see, we, we need to take, sometimes we also need to take the example of Job, isn't it? Where he, he was afflicted with so many problems. He lost his family. He, he'd come up with boils. And um, instead of blaming God, he, he praised him. And we need to have that, that kind of attitude that Job did. Let's, let's go back anyway. We hear that teaching that you did uh, a few weeks ago. Job, Job chapter 2, no, Job chapter 1, verse 6. Amen. Job chapter 1, verse 6. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach to you a little bit about Job today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to I only preach what God tells me to preach. Amen. If you want something different, there's nothing I can do. And I won't do anything because I'm, I'm obedient. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. Job chapter 1. And the title of, the, of this message is Praise Him instead of blaming Him. <laughs> blaming who? Blaming God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Job chapter 1. <coughs> Let's go to verse 6. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, Yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with him. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's present. One day when Job's son and daughters were feasting at the oldest brother's house, a messenger arrived at Job's home with his news. Your oxen were plowing, with the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabians raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farmlands, farmhands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, a third messenger arrived with this news. Three bands of Chaldean raiders have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. While you were still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in the oldest brother's home. Suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all your children are dead. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. Job stood up and tore his clothes in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I'll be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. Turn to your neighbor and say, did you hear that? Yeah, did you hear that? <laughs> did you hear that? Did you hear this child? <laughs> Out of everything, this was a man, if you read in Job chapter 1, hallelujah, the beginning of Job, this was a man, the Bible says, he was the most wealthiest man of the entire region. He had everything. Amen. But he was always blameless in front of the eyes of God. He was always a man. 
integrity, blameless. Amen. When you go on to read in chapter 2, Satan again be appeared before God. And you know what Satan said? God said, did you see my son Job? You took everything away. You did all that you touched him physically. Did you see my son Job? And you know what Satan said? He said, yes. But touch him on his body and see what he will do. Surely he won't serve you. And God said, go on then. You've taken everything. You've taken his children. You've taken his property. You've taken, you've taken his sheep, his oxen, whatever. You've taken all of this. Now you want to touch his body because you say, still, even if you touch his body, when you touch his body, you think he will turn around and he will say something against me, Jehovah Jireh El Shaddai. You touch his body. Let's see what Job will do. And instantly Satan left the throne room of God and from the head of Job's head, from his head to his toe, the Bible said he was filled with boils. To the point where Job was sitting on the ashes and he got a bit of piece of broken pottery. And he took that pot of pottery and he started scraping, scraping the boils of his body. His wife turned around and he said to him, why did you just curse God and die? Curse God and die. Even his wife lost all faith and hope. What's this? And you know what he said? He said, don't talk like a foolish woman. Do we only accept good things from God? What about bad things? I will still praise his name. Amen. Amen. So my message today is, are you going through what Job is going through? You may be going through this much, an inch, a little tiny bit of what Job is going through. But what is your attitude? What is your heart? What is your mind? How are you in your heart, in your spirit, with God? Are you turning around blaming God and you're not even going through all that Job went through? How are you in your heart? Are you staying there, sitting there saying, God, even, you know, you did this, and you did that, and you allowed this, and you allowed that in my life. And you've just gone through this much. Imagine what Job went through. His sons died. His daughters died. His sheep, his oxen, his donkeys, whatever that was all, that was all taken, it was stolen from him. Yet he still praised God. His body was filled with boils, yet he still praised God. He was blameless before the eyes of God. So my question today is, how are you before the eyes of God? When you go through a trial, a test, a bit of persecution, a bit of difficulty, a bit of a problem, a bit of a situation, how are you before the eyes of God? Can God turn around and say, you are blameless before his sight? Can God turn around and say, you are a man or a woman of integrity? before his sight. Can God turn around and say, Satan, did you see my daughter? Did you see my son? How are you before God? What are you doing in your heart, in your mind, in you? Oh, it's all God. I go to church every Sunday. I serve him, yet this is still happening. I do all these things for God. I give my tithes, my offerings. I mean, you know, I pray, yet this is still happening. What sort of a God is this? If you're doing that, you better quickly repent and turn your hearts and turn your ways away from doing things like that. Stop blaming him. Stop blaming God for the problems and the situation and the difficulty you are going through. Stop it. Stop it. Amen. Amen. You know what happened to Job? You read in the last chapter. Amen. Chapter 42. You know the Bible says, hallelujah, that Job had, I even wrote it down, <laughs> Job had 7,000 sheep. Amen. Amen. God gave him 14,000 sheep. Amen. Because God found him so blameless in his sight, he said, I'm going to bless you, Job, with double portion. Even 
world. Never did that back then. You always wrote the son in the world. He even wrote his daughters in the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, the Bible says, many are the afflictions yes. of the righteous, mm. but he delivered them all from it. Amen. 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 Because of the way Job stood before God, because of his blameless attitude, because of his integrity, because of his righteousness, because in his heart he didn't blame God. He's, in his heart he didn't say anything bad about God. In his heart he didn't say, it's your fault God, I'm going through this. But in it he still praised God. In the situation, in the difficulty, in the problem, he still said, thank you God. He still blessed him. You know, his friends, the Bible says, came from very far to see him because they heard all that Job had gone through. And his friends even blamed him. They blamed Job. They yeah. said, surely mm. you've done evil in the eyes of God for this to happen yeah. to you. Yeah. Surely you've been wrong and you've been bad. No wonder. Amen. But Job said, I will not say anything. I will still praise the name of the Lord. I will still tell, you know, I will still be a man of righteousness and integrity before God. Amen. And you know what? God actually, the Bible says, God dealt with those friends of his. He dealt with his friends because of what they said against Job. Job was righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stop, let's stop blaming God for every bad thing that is happening in our lives. Let's stop blaming him for the situation, the problem, the difficulty that we're in. Let's start praising God. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. 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 Stop blaming him. Stop blaming him. Neighbor, neighbor, stop blaming him. Stop, start praising him. Start Weeping may last for the night. Hey. Weeping Hallelujah. may last for the night. Hallelujah. But joy yes, in the morning. Hallelujah. Weeping Psalm 150. I love this song. <coughs> psalm 150. It says, Praise the Lord. It's a last psalm. Amen. 150. It says, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary, which is praise him in the church. Praise him in his house. Praise him in his temple. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with a lyre and the harp. Praise him with a tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with a loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises Hallelujah. to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's another version which says, let every breath that has breath praise the Lord. Praise his name. Amen. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. the name Amen. of Amen. God. Amen. Whatever you're going through or whatever the situation. Amen. Hallelujah. God told me to come today and tell you to praise his name. Hallelujah. You know when Sister Aisha, many years ago I heard a testimony and, the, and she said, she stood up and she said, when I was in my bedroom, I'll never forget this testimony, when I was in my bedroom I couldn't get up from the floor, she said, because of the pain in her back. Amen. What did she start doing? <clears throat> she started praising the Lord. Didn't you, Sister Aisha? You start praising God. And as she started praising God, the pain started going. The pain started disappearing. When our praises go up, the blessings come down. When our praises go up, the healing comes down. Amen. Amen. And that's what happened to her. She got Amen. healed. Amen. Just 
my debt. Amen. The pain went. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want us all to stand up right now. And I want us to repent before the Lord. And say, Father God, forgive me, Lord, if I have sinned before your eyes. Forgive me, God, if I have spoken badly about you in my heart. If I've sinned in my heart against you, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for blaming you for my situation, blaming you for the problems, blaming you for the difficulties. Oh, Lord, forgive me, Lord. Just close your eyes wherever you are and just repent before the, eye, before the Lord. Just say, Lord. Wow, what a powerful teaching again, Pastor Maria. You know, I, it, it, sometimes we do fall into that trap, don't we? Where we think, why, is, why, why am I not getting this job? Why am I not getting married? Or why am I I'm in, in, in a financial mess? You know, sometimes we start pointing fingers at God. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a curse or this or that. And sometimes we just need to um, just praise Him. Just, just put our lives, you know, our lives are in His hands. So, you know, the moment we became born again, we've entrusted our lives into God's hands and every part of our life now is in control of a God and sometimes we think he's not because we're going through this trial and that trial and this thing and you know these trials are just just for him to purify us even more mm -hmm. take out things that he revealed to us about us while we're going through these trials and it's just for him to purify us to get us ready to receive that blessing because if we jump into that blessing when we're not ready for it we're just going to mess it up and, and 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 that's what we need to do just to remember to to praise him and, and to and, and to praise him as Sort of blaming God all the time. Yeah, um, it was um, it was quite a good it was a, a, a good message because what people what we see people find themselves in is when they're going through a trial they're going through a difficult time or a difficult period in their lives what they start to do is they start to blame everyone yeah. they start to start pointing fingers at others they even start to start you know they start pointing fingers at God saying. I'm going through this and it's all God's fault. God allowed this. God did this. God mm. did that. They start blaming God instead of thanking Him and praising Him. You know, um, mm. many years ago, I heard of a wonderful word and it was like, when you praise God, praising God will take you out of the situation you're it's in. Yeah. Thanking God will take you out of the problem you're in. Giving Him the mm. praise, giving Him all the honor, mm. all the glory will take you out of the mess you mm. in instead of pointing a finger mm. at God and saying it's all yeah. God's fault why I'm in this situation I blame God for everything instead of doing all of that you need to start giving him the glory Amen. giving him the praise put on some lovely mm. worship music on and praise God and wherever dance you well. are <laughs> David dance, David dance before David God, dance before God yeah. <laughs> absolutely and just dance before him mm. put on your praise music and say thank you God because no matter what mm. God is in control mm -hmm. no matter what he is in control of That's every true. situation and what i liked about job you know his friends were mocking him yes you know his wife was saying you know we'll just curse god and die yes. and he didn't he he, mm -hmm. he stuck by it. because you know he he recognized this is what job yes. I, I liked about job he recognized who god was Amen. and yes. he recognized if god if god has done this to me he can make it better Absolutely. And, and what did he do in the end he gave him a double portion of everything yeah. everything was restored back to him even yeah. more than he had than he had and um that's that's what i liked about job and he, and he because of that he did so we need to just remember that god is in control he's in control and 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 and, and whatever we're going through whatever we're suffering let's not wear it let's just worship god and praise him because of who he is because he's our almighty god if he's able to do things if he's able to do the 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 the, the, the impossible to make him into possible things then then we should praise him amen. just because he is god amen. amen and you know i'm talking about you know he, he, um, job got healed and praising and talk about the, the uh, healing we had before Absolutely. about sister maureen getting healed we had another healing didn't we um yes brother, brother kevin. kevin his back here the back problem and we just want to take you back to that testimony where brother kevin got healed um of a, a a severe back problem he had, didn't he? a pain, and he couldn't even bend down. And, and we'll just take you back to that, to that healing. Um, would you like to tell us, Brother Kevin, what happened when, when the healing anointing came yeah. down? Um, there, was a, there was a Friday before church, obviously, and I, I suddenly got the worst back pain ever. Uh, I have suffered from back pain before, but this was really bad. I just could hardly move at all. So I was pretty much laid out for the weekend, but I still came to church and I really struggled. I mean, driving the car here was like really painful. Every time I moved my, my leg to the brake, it was like, oh, the pain. And I was just sitting about where Lloyd is actually. And um, Pastor Maria said, if anyone's feeling in pain, put your hand where the pain is. And uh, I put my hand on my back. 
and in fact it made me just collapse forward into the chair in front and I was just there just in agony and then Pastor Maria said, it, said to me Kevin get up and walk up and down so I was walking up and down as I was walking up and down I could feel some warmth in me going up and, up and down my back and then I thought okay I'll stop walking up and down and then Pastor Andy came over and said no no keep walking keep walking so there I was, I was walking up and down this carpet up and down and I could feel this incredible warmth going all through my back and then after a period of time, I don't know how many minutes it was, after a period of time I just thought, the pain's gone. Praise it is God. gone. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a mic to my Pastor Mary asked me to bend down to show everyone that the pain had gone. And this is what I did. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What a powerful Amen. testimony. Wow. You know, I, I remember him in the congregation. Yes. He, he was sitting there he, as we were worshipping and he was trying to worship, but he, he was he was holding his back. He, he, he looked like in, in, in wow. some discomfort. And then when he called him out to come and, and walk up and down, I, I went over to him and said, you know, just keep on walking. And, 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 I, and, I, and I prayed for him. And, and, and he, as he was walking in that faith, he was walking in faith, but he you, just got healed. Uh, amen. And it, he had that problem since Friday. He was, yeah, he said yeah. in his testimony, he was in so much pain since Friday. And when he came to Sunday service, he didn't even know if he was going to come to Sunday <laughs> service because he was in so much pain. Look at that. And he came and he got his healing. Wow. And you see, he was bending down. Praise the Lord. You know, God amen. can do. There's nothing that God cannot do. You Absolutely. Know? And he, he, he does so much, so much great stuff. Again. Yeah. You know, the healings and, and other testimonies that we have Absolutely. every week. It's, it's amazing. God is good. And yeah, Jesus still him. heals. He healed back then. Yeah. He heals today and he yeah, heals yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So whatever you're going through, whatever Whatever illness, sickness, disease, whatever it is that you have, God can heal you from that illness. He can heal you from that disease. Whatever you do, don't give up Amen. by trusting God. Amen. Amen. And we want to thank you for watching again. Yeah. And um, also, just ring our helpline. It's on, on, on the screen there. Any problems you have, you need someone to talk to or counseling or prayer, Amen. just give just give the ministry a call and we'll be happy Amen. to help you. God bless you. Thank you so much for, for, for watching us again.